our nation in ever-increasing number fly the mighty birds of the Army Air Corps, vigilant guardians of American freedom. And today, when all the world is looking skyward, thousands of young men from every walk of life join in the great adventure as flying cadets in the United States Army Air Corps, the Cal Aero Field, one of the many preliminary training centers throughout the country for the Army's flying cadets. Up we go, into the wild sky yonder, keep the wings level and true. have as their trust the tradition of the United States Army Air Corps and the honor of these heroes to uphold. Colonel O.D. Hunter, Major Raoul Luftberry, Captain E.V. Rickenbacker. You know, when those guys were flying, they'd have to hang out of the stick with one hand and hold a wing on with the other. The job was tough, all right, but the records certainly give a fellow something to shoot at. Now, take it easy, buddy. This flying business is a cinch. It's just a game, like football. Right after the kickoff, you start pitching. Keep your head up and your tail down before the final gun, you're over the goal line. Naturally, boys, I don't want to spread it on too thick. But in years to come, new cadets will be reading the name Bucky Norton. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about it, mistress? Has anybody told you you're supposed to remove your hats in the presence of those names? No, sir. No, 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 no. Well, uncover, mistress. And as for you, Mr. Dumb Dodo, you're revved up to 3,000 fur. You'd better turn off the breeze. Your noble countenance looks familiar. Could it be that I've seen you someplace before? Could be. I get around. Sure, it's Bucky Norton, all American football. Pipe down. Why, of course, Mr. Norton. I've seen your picture in the papers. I don't believe I caught your name. Straighten up, mister, your detention. And get this. No matter how many times your pictures appeared in the papers, no man's a hero his first day here or any day after until he's proved himself one. And you'll find chasing a football is lots easier than chasing a clown. Remember that, Mr. Dumb Dodo. Better get yourselves ready. Inspection in five minutes. A little tough on the big boy, weren't you, Burnett? You think that's something? Say, when I landed here, I was twice as fresh as Mr. All-American. Somebody had to straighten me out for my own good. Yeah. You know, it wouldn't surprise me if he turned out to be as good a flyer as he already thinks he is. But from now on, I'm claiming his nibs as my personal property. I wish to extend a hearty welcome to the new cadets. You have come here to work and to learn. We'll be together only 10 short weeks. That is, if you make the grade. If you don't, our time together will be even shorter. Some of you gentlemen will be sent back home or transferred to another branch of the Air Corps. And you'll take it pretty hard. But to give you a word of encouragement, do the best you can. Give the best you have, and you won't be blaming yourself. So now, good luck and happy landings. Take charge, mister. Company commanders, dismiss your companies. Dismissed! Hey, where does fella check in around here? Wait a minute, you're Mr... Uh, I'm Crocker, this is Hennessy. <laughs> Why, of course. The commanding officer told me to look out for you boys, to extend his personal greetings, and to say that he wants you both for tea this afternoon. He did? Oh, he's kidding. <laughs> What's the matter with you dumb dodos? Didn't anybody ever tell you to remove your hats in the presence of those names? Well, uncover, misters! Marching along the flying line, the new cadets are on their way to hangar number six, where they will meet their chief flying instructor. Hey, Hennessy, did you send your girl a picture of you in that new uniform? Sure, me and Crocker both. Oh, he's just kidding. This, gentlemen, is an airplane. I thought it was a horse and buggy. You may think you've seen a plane before, but as far as the Army's concerned, you haven't. Well, anyone can learn to take a plane off the ground, circle the field, and land. Flying in the service is entirely different. You have to be a master mechanic, an expert at radio, navigation. You have to learn precision flying, the ability to carry out orders unerringly in a military manner. So to be sure you don't miss anything, let's start at the beginning. This, then, is a propeller. Slowly and systematically, their training begins. The first few days are spent in purely fundamental instructions. 
acquainting the new cadets not only with the ships they will soon be flying, but orienting them into the everyday routine in the life of a flying cadet. This is known as the watchtower. That flag means dual flying. Keep an eye on it. If it's red, no one goes up. They're grounded because the weather's bad. On this board, the complete record of every flying cadet is told. The gold star means a perfect record throughout the entire course of training. It entitles you to the Cadet Hall of Fame. The silver star designates the Hall of Accomplishment. It means a perfect record for the week. The blue star entitles the cadet to the Hall of Horror, a not quite perfect record for the week. And the red star designates the student to the Hall of Shame. You see, misters, just as the flying man's record is written in the heavens, so it is on this board. Keep shooting at the stars, the gold ones. The first big thrill comes to the dodos when they are issued their flying helmets, suits, and goggles. Hey, what if that's a bailout of 10,000 feet and the thing doesn't work? Oh, that's easy. Bring it back, he'll give you a new one. Hey, but how's he gonna bring... Oh, you're this kid. <laughs> <laughs> and a bigger thrill when they walk to the flying line to meet their individual flying instructors. Look out, Ozone, here I come. Gosh, Bucky, I'm getting a little shaky. Cut it, it's a cinch. Here's where I get off. Go to it, kid. Keep your luck, down. See you upstairs, fellas. Wish me luck, Buggy. I'll roll over on my back and wave to you going by. I might have known it would be you, Mr. Dump Dodo. And since a dodo is a bird that can't fly, you're not entitled to wear your goggles on your forehead until you've soloed. Which, if I'm any judge of personality, will be a long, long time from now. You're Mr. Norton? Yes, sir. You've been assigned to me for instruction. You'll be my student until you leave this training school. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Now, Mr. Norton, remember to be completely relaxed at all times. Any man who becomes tense, excitable, will never make an army flyer. Take the stick lightly in your right hand. Now place your feet on the pedal control, lightly. Exert no pressure. I'll handle the ship. But follow my movements with the control so that you get the feel of the plane. Young men from all over America sprouting their wings for the first time in a new world of rolls, loops, chandelles, spins. Some of them learn quickly, but for others, keeping your tail down seems a pretty tough proposition. Well, a fine pair of pals you misters turn out to be. Moping in your room while the great Bucky Norton's making a perfect spot landing. Think of it. Only a week and I'm an expert. If you ask me, the great Bucky Norton will never be able to solo. By that time, his head will be too big to get into a plane. Hey, what's the matter with you two misters? You going to a spin or something? Well, we've got a double load of bad news. Two of us don't seem to be doing so well in this flying business. I don't see what's worrying you guys. Flying a ship is just like taking kisses from a fly. Now look, when you get into a vertical bank, be sure that your left rudder... Attention. Very interesting, Mr. Norton. Gentlemen, it's quite obvious that Mr. Norton, the ex-football hero, is sprouting his pin feathers. Mr. Norton, suppose you illustrate some of your remarkable experiences in the air. We might learn something, gentlemen. Yes. Switch on, mister. Take off. <laughs> With explanations, please. Well, I taxied down to the end of the field. Opened the throttle, pulled back the stick, and took off. Wonderful, wonderful. Now let's see a vertical climb. Beautiful. Now let's see a spin, mister. <laughs> mister Davis, being unable to control yourself on the ground, perhaps you can do better in the air. Would you join Mr. Norton for a little formation flying? Yes. 
Well, that's enough, Mr. Burnett. I don't mind playing your little games with you, but Crocker and Hennessy have had a rough time today. Leave them alone. I'm sorry, fellas. But you're not washed out until the check pilot says so. Remember that. And it's for you. It's not customary for a dodo to speak unless he's spoken to. You know, one of these days, I'm going to be an upperclassman, too. You're just the kind of guy I'd love to take a poke at. I'm scared to death. You shouldn't have said that, Bucky. Ah, forget it. Mr. Crocker, I'll take you first. Yes, sir. Rest, gentlemen. Hey, Crocker, I've been looking for you. I hear you're up for your tech flight. Listen, you've got nothing to worry about. All you got to remember sure, is... Sure, I know, Bucky. Cut it, Hennessy. He'll make it all right. He won't wash out. Besides, it's not your party. Well, anyway, you're sticking together. Cast no reflection on your fitness for other work. You gentlemen have failed to qualify as military pilots, and you may return to civilian life if that is your desire. But if you prefer to remain in the service, this board will recommend you for another branch of the Air Corps, and you'll be sent to another school. Let us have your decision in writing within the next week. That's all, gentlemen. Hey, Bucky! I was looking for you. You know what I just found out? Sure, Crocker and Hennessy. Tough luck. Yeah, but something else. I was standing out of the gate. Safer, will you, fella? I got something kind of important in my mind right about now. Why, what is it? Look. Oh, the white flag. That means you're going to solo. <laughs> this is it. Okay, no, go 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 Save the cheers. Save the cheers, misters, and all the congratulations. I'll be back in a few minutes with a perfect three point landing. Well, make it good, Bucky. We've been watching. All right, Mr. Norton, she's yours. Now, on the first solo, all you're supposed to do is take off, circle the field, and make a three-point landing. This flying bin it seems to come rather easy to you, so I suggest you take plenty of altitude and do me a spin. Recover and land. Nervous? Oh, no. Well, maybe a little. You'll get over it when you're upstairs. Happy landing. Dodo, you're an upperclassman now. Yeah, well, now that I am an upperclassman, I hope Burnett's around. Just in the humor to meet that guy. But that's what I was trying to tell you before. Burnett was transferred this morning. You mean he's not here anymore? That's right, I just saw him leave. That's what I've been trying to tell you. Oh, how do you like that? <laughs> when a Dodo becomes a Birdman, he soon leaves the scene of his preliminary training and reports at one of the Army's basic training schools. This one is March Field. Here, the men learn to fly faster and bigger ships. 
And you can bet they're plenty thrilled the first time they taxi one of these new pursuit jobs down the field. Painted in somber camouflage, these single-seaters are designed for lightning maneuverability and mount two machine guns which fire through the propeller. But the bombing planes with their far-spreading wings dwarf the other aircraft. Graceful as a bird, they lift themselves from the ground and they take off in droves. Blind flying is taught in the Army's newly perfected link trainer. In this laboratory ship, completely hidden in darkness, the pilot learns to fly on instruments alone. And he learns the intricacies of formation flying. These streamlined ships look like flying torpedoes. And although racing through the sky at comet speed, the pilot and his plane seem suspended over the roof of the world. He is initiated into the beauties and mysteries of cross-country flying. Every day during this period of training, giant armadas sweep low over the nearby rooftops. The immensity of these man-made machines, their thunderous power, the precision of their instruments reacting to the pilot's slightest touch makes them a miracle of a modern century. Then in the shadow of the greatest bombing plane in the world today, the Flying Fortress, the Army Air Corps pilot is awarded the traditional and honorable symbol of an Army Birdman. He gets his wings. Well, it's a great pleasure to present you with these wings. Wings. This comes as the most thrilling moment in the life of a man who would fly. Conquerors of another world, high aloft. These are no longer men of the earth, but appointed at this moment, rulers of the sky. Hey, North, did you send your girl a picture of you and those new wings? Tennessee, what are you fellas doing here? Well, we're learning to drop bombs with this new bomb site. We couldn't learn to fly a plane, but we can still ride in one. He ain't kidding. Keep your eye on that target out there, and I'll show you how to drop an egg into a pickle barrel from 20,000 feet. Okay. <laughs> Mighty thoughtful of you getting us assigned to your ship. And don't thank me, I'm only the co-pilot. Say, who is the first pilot of this buggy, you know? Well, it's at your service, Mr. Dumb Uh-oh. -oh. I was hoping we'd meet again because I want to tell you, although you were a fresh cadet, I understand you've turned into quite a flyer, Lieutenant. So here, shake. I promised myself, Mr. Burnett, that if I ever met you again, I'd give you that poke in the jaw. Remember? I, uh, wouldn't want the general to see that. Suppose we go over to the hangar. I want to talk to you. Now, before you start racing your motor, Norton, get this. I felt it was my duty as an upperclassman to give a fresh cadet the works. But I can see you'll never be satisfied until you resort to violence. Well, now, we're both officers, and that makes us gentlemen. So we can't hold a grudge. Not since we're working for the same guy, Uncle Sam. So I've got an idea. Just to get it out of your system, and maybe mine too. We'll both take one good sock at each other, and then shake hands for keeps. What do you say? OK. I'll give you the first sock. Thanks. I, uh, I kind of hate to do this to you, Norton. You better make it a good one, because I'm next. It's a long hop from Dodo to Army Birdman, but the young men of America, tens of thousands of them, are making it every day, all working for the same guy, Uncle Sam, all partners in this great business of flying for the Army. All hail to these mighty birds of the Army Air Corps and to the men who fly them. 
wings of steel, watchful sentinels in the sky, standing forever guardians of our Bill of Rights. <laughs>